Blizz couch. <laughs> we are on the Blizz couch. <laughs> we have had such an amazing year. I cannot that believe that BlizzCon is coming to a close. We've got so much more. And right now, we have Chris Metzen, Senior Vice President of Story and Franchise Development of Blizzard Entertainment, joining us. Chris, welcome to the Blizz couch. Thank you. It's it's a nice couch. You like <laughs> it? I like it here. You got animals, edition. you got a little bit, little bit of everything. You can have him. <laughs> yeah. You know, this actually folds back into a futon, so you can just sleep here. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know? It's a, yeah. kind of a more of a blizz futon. I think I want to sleep. You know? I don't want to leave. I know, I'm right? it's the last day, man. Just, if we got this thing, I don't know, man. It's, it's, it's well, not, Chris, you know, know safe. wanted to ask you, because it was 10 years ago in 2005 that the very first BlizzCon was held. And now we are at 2015. What has it been like for you to watch this convention grow? Wow, that's a really good question. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. it's, been, it's been insane. Um, we, we had no idea when we started this thing all those years ago um, how it would grow, how it would touch people and draw people back um, over and over and over throughout the weekend. Um, I'm meeting people like this is, this is my second, third, fourth, fifth BlizzCon, and I, I keep saying like how is that even statistically possible just buying tickets <laughs> Um, but I love these stories. I love running into people. We, we met in the game. We got married because we met in the game. Um, and just seeing what the game and this show mean to people in terms of just making connections and feeling connected to the community, um, we never in our wildest Im imaginations could we have seen what this thing would become. It's, it's super humbling um, and it's an amazing thing to be part of every year. An incredible thing that I think that is, you know, everybody here in in the hall right now has been waiting for for years was the cinematic for the Warcraft movie, the trailer, the world premiere, and everyone got to see it here today. And it's coming out in May, June, June, mm -hmm. uh, twenty sixteen, something, twenty sixteen, summer. <laughs> and so for you, I, I mean, I know I, you've been such a huge process of this in the, in the process, so. What's it like for you to see the entire crowd get excited about it? It's overwhelming. Um, it was overwhelming. Um, as the flick kind of started up, you know, you always have that kind of, oh God, I hope they like it. Um, and pe it just seemed like it took people right with it. Uh, what I loved was the gas, uh, the camera kind of cranes over the bow of the ship and it kind of plunges down and you see the, the depth of frame. Um, let me pause. Are we talking about the Legion cinematic? I was talking about the Warcraft movie, but Crap. we could we can talk about the Legion cinematic <laughs> if you want. <laughs> I apologize. Let me rewind tape. <laughs> Bring it back. Yes, it was amazing. <laughs> <laughs> As everybody's watching the film trailer, same kind of thing. I'll be dead honest with you. There's that not apprehension, but like that hope that everybody will will vibe on it, will dig on it, right? We'll we'll kind of get what they're seeing after all this time and all this build up. Um, could it match expectations? Can it take people there? Um, and the crowd roared, and I felt like we had achieved what we had set out to achieve. And I guess uh, it is sort of uh, confusing at times because you know you do have the World of Warcraft Legion cinematic as well, yeah. and Sylvanas's bow is amazing. How badass that. is that? Yes. 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 Okay. <laughs> Actually, that was what, one of my other favorite parts was, you know, the gunship comes out of the fog and you kind of see her silhouette, and I could hear people going, <gasps> you know, kind of, yeah. it's her, it's her, it's her. Uh, that was awesome. I, I actually was not prepared. I was not prepared for how, <laughs> uh, sorry, I had to, for how geeked up people were to see her. Um, I love that. I love yeah. that confirmation, that mm -hmm. kind of moves that the story team's making, Alex Afrasiabi and his story team, they are kind of driving point on all this stuff, and I love that confirmation that their instincts were exactly right, yeah. and that's what people want, because yep. um, we want to, we want to serve that, right? We want to, we want to bring the ideas we want to bring, but we want people to be with us the entire time and to kind of leverage those characters and those ideas and themes that people want to see. Especially when you're just seeing. Varian Rin with Sylvanas fighting side by side. Cool, that's, huh? that's pretty crazy. For Azeroth. Yeah. <laughs> well, look, the how, was that, how was that VO, by the way? I have to, have to say. Were you? I have to say. Ah, oh, War Chief. Well, I, I can't remember being in a, one of those big cinematics before, so it was really <laughs> exciting for me to get to Fantastic. finally do his voice on a big. Uh, and look, cinematic aside, 
tons of announcements about WoW Legion. Yeah. I mean, almost all the classes are getting overhauls, if not all the classes. Artifact Art weapons, yeah. class hall, uh, class order halls. Mm -hmm. What's your favorite piece that you finally got to share? Like the thing that you've been waiting to share of all of the aspects of, of all the of game? the aspects of Legion. I'm excited about artifact weapons. Um, I want to say this will sound canned or whatever. It's not, but like I. There's some gameplay sequences coming up yeah. uh, that Alex and his team have put together that are so epic. I mean, some of the most epic moments the Alliance and Horde have ever been part of um, as they assault Gul'dan's stronghold at the Broken Isles. Like, it is, it's some of the most epic moments that have ever been in the game. Um, and when people get to walk through these events and see what plays out and see the ramifications of this invasion, uh, that for me, that's where the game lives and breathes, right? Yeah. It's, it's, uh, I'm so excited for people to see what's coming and, and live it. Ooh, you know? I can't wait. I know, I'm so jazzed. I, I hate that no. I can't, I ain't oh. gonna spoil anything, but I, I hate that I can't tell you, but it's, it's oh, uh, man. exciting uh. stuff. <laughs> now, Overwatch. Yes, sir. A lot of mystery behind this game leading up to this weekend. Mm -hmm. You guys dropped that fantastic trailer on, trailer on us last year. Yeah, yeah. Now all the details are out. How does it feel that the mysteries and all the, the mysteries behind it have been revealed? Oh, my to the God. World? It's, it's, uh, it's amazing. We got to do uh, kind of a lore panel today. And, I watched uh, it. I watched it's like that. finally we can tell people parts of this story, right? We don't have to hide it. We don't have to, like, it's, there's, no, uh, there's no handcuffs anymore. Um, and we could just geek out and gush. Yeah. Um, it's uh, building, you know, this, this universe with this team has been uh, one of the funnest things I've, I've ever been part of at Blizzard. And to be able to really express it and really show people our love for it um, and how cool these ideas are has been, uh, I'll tell you, after 22 years, it's, yeah. been, uh, it's been one of my favorite, favorite eras at Blizzard. Yeah. Um, this, this game, this big idea, this team, um, my friends and my brothers and sisters on, on the Overwatch team, sharing this with them has been uh, one, of the, one of the real high points of my career. Right, and I got to say, I'm super excited about those animated shorts you guys yeah. have. Yeah. yeah. Where are we going to be able to catch those? Uh, let me think about that, man. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I wish I had a Team 4 guy here to tell me <laughs> what it's safe to say and not safe to say. Um, let's, let's say this, um, we have a handful of them that we're planning. Um, and we would like them to drop somewhere around the hot window of the game um, and be part of all of that energy and all of that excitement. Um, uh, but I, I don't know if I am cleared to say specifically. Totally cool. I, was, I had to ask good. that. I'm, I'm, I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> I had to ask. We don't want to get in enough trouble. I've been in enough trouble this weekend. But we <laughs> also have Hearthstone, which just uh, keeps yes, pumping out content. Like, I can't believe they are League of Explorers, which has been something in Ironforge that's been going on for quite some totally, time. Totally. It's like, how many yeah. people even remember that the Explorers League was in Ironforge? Was it like Magellus and all those yeah. characters? And I loved the idea back in the day, and we wound up talking. Um, I can't tell time anymore, maybe it was <laughs> eight months ago, and the guy's like, we have this idea to kind of do this uh, super adventure kind of hook, and I'm like, well, um, you know, League of Explorers, you know? Um, and it all seemed that they just, and once it was kind of like, oh, is that okay, we can chase that? I'm like, guys, go, just go, 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 and the ideas, like Ben Brode, Eric Dodds, like the whole team just started making the ideas rain. My favorite being the Murloc. Sir Finley was Murgleton. This bit, <laughs> like Ben, My favorite. Ben, ben no. pitched the idea. He's like, no. So what you'll see is, you know, the, the whole Murloc thing. And then in subtitles, like, by Jove, my friends, I think we found the treasure. <laughs> I'm like, oh my, and I just, <laughs> I was dying. I'm like, okay, you guys just run with the ball. Do your thing. <laughs> the gentleman um, Murloc, <laughs> oh. true gentleman Murloc. Oh, just he's so good. Divinely inspired, you know. Oh. And Elise. At least our seeker, yes. I mean, she's an incredible character. Yes. And it says too that she's led many successful missions, but yes. I've never heard of her before. I, I believe, oh God, I believe they made her up. Did they not make her up for Hearthstone? I thought they did. I'd never heard be of her before now. I'm sticking with that. I <laughs> Me too. I, I think they made yep. her up for Hearthstone and I was watching uh, the demo, I love how the map kind of transforms as you kind of yeah. her in the game. It's just fantastic. But the golden monkey. And by the way, so that so that comes out soon. Yeah. Like next week. 
Can as well as. As well as. As, as, the as, well as uh, yeah. Legacy of the Void. I mean, you guys are like, it's not just, hey, let's come here and announce stuff that you'll see in months. Roughing <laughs> Adam It's like, Palms. let's just announce stuff and talk about stuff that's like, you can just go yeah. out and get that. Legacy so of the Void that? is one of the best, it may be the best RTS campaign we've ever built. Wow. After all these years, this team is so experienced and so good at working with the engine, at building the levels, at conceiving of the mission gimmicks, and I think all these Protoss ideas, after all, <laughs> after all these years <laughs> of building this product, um, the team was ready just to execute, um, just from the, the mission design, the art direction, the, the conceptualization. Uh, this time around we had James Waugh and his writing team mm -hmm. step up and really develop out the, the script and the storyline and develop out all the new characters. Um, it was so rad you know, to, to see everybody get under the hood and really develop a Protoss experience that was not only really uniquely Protossy, which yeah. is weird, right? <laughs> like, weird thing so, to say. So much of StarCraft kind of, uh, in a way, it revolves around Jim and Sarah, right? And that, that, the gravity of their storyline right down the middle and the galactic events that kind of spiral around their dynamic. And the Protoss storyline was just so uniquely mm -hmm. other, right? It's yeah. not about them. It's this grand mythology playing out and this, you know, the cycles of history coming around again. And right. I felt like the team just absolutely yeah. Just nailed it, right? It's right. it's mythic. It's mega. It's yeah. it's, it's you know uh, res strangely resonant for a bunch right. of characters that do not have mouths yep. and cannot <laughs> emote. Um, they found a way uh, to. Am I spitting? I'm seeing bing, little bits. It's not, of it's not getting picked it's up. It's not getting camera. anywhere. But they found well. a way to make you <laughs> to to humanize them and to to bring out their their vibe and their their. Um, you know the, the intensity of this storyline, and you, you right. find yourself like I'm, I'm with them. Yeah. You guys uh, see the uh, the reclamation cinematic we put out? Um, oh, yeah. yeah. It was that a couple was weeks ago. It was about a month ago, yeah. and I was sitting with my daughter, and we're, we're I'm like, you got you got to check this out. And she's like, <laughs> she doesn't really know Starcraft. She knows Kerrigan, and I'm like, no, check this out. And she's kind of like, okay, Dad, you know, like these kind of faceless characters. Yep. And by the end, it's like my life for Iyer, and she's like. <laughs> Yeah. Oh. oh. <laughs> you know, I'm with them, you know? Yeah. There it was. Pardon me. <laughs> um, Protoss. It was just off the hook, right? Yeah. We, we had conjured that emotion we were seeking, and all of that plays out in the, con in the campaign. You indeed, know? indeed. And speaking of Protoss, there was a Protoss player that won the StarCraft final today. How rad is yeah. that? <laughs> it, was rad. it was like the perfect way to pass the baton to Legacy you, of the Void. You couldn't almost. have framed that any yeah. better. Any better, yeah, yeah. Well, esports have been big this weekend. Yeah. How's been, what's been your outlook? on all the esports. You guys have four world championships. The first ever Heroes of the Storm champion. To, to me, it's kind of insane. I, I've been running around all weekend and I didn't get to see any of the matches, but it's something that it's, it's becoming more and more a part of the profile, obviously, of, of BlizzCon. And it's just, it's where people are at these days. Right. Um, it's, it's amazing to see you know, these halls full of people, the arena down there, just full of people, just losing their minds yes. over, you know, just these little spaceships and soldiers going <laughs> off. Yeah. It's like, it's <laughs> glorious. You know, I could, never could have imagined. Um, not only was it kind of blowing up, you know, in, in Asia all those years ago, but to see it kind of spreading and finding its feet internationally, um, and, and really, uh, like, certainly for our games, kind of culminating here is, uh, it's amazing. You I know, know. It and now we have- taken right. on a life of its own, yeah. you know, yeah. and, and found relevance and found a, you know, an audience that really just, it's their, it's their thing. You know what I would like to see? I would like to see five eSports championships oh. next year. <laughs> Interesting. Add in Overwatch. Sign them up. What's the oh, chances we'll see an Overwatch championship next year? <laughs> I like that. <laughs> That's I a good sign. One good reason why we shouldn't do that next year. It'd be fantastic. Well, for you, Chris, I mean, I know this has been such a huge show and it's sort of like, making you choose a baby. <laughs> but what has been one of your favorite moments of BlizzCon 2015? Mm -hmm. Think about it. Take your time. Take your time. I want to make this good. Uh, we did a panel today, and we answered a lot of questions about Overwatch. We did about 25 minutes of Q&A, and it was awesome. Like, the, the, the fans came with, like, epic questions. So like, it was, like, meaningful Q&A. It was awesome. And the time's up. And I look at the clock, and I'm like, okay, guys, you know, it's time to wrap in my head. I'm thinking it's time to wrap it up. And just through the, through the haze and the light, oh. this little kid steps up. Oh, yeah. Oh, it was perfect. And he might have been, like, I, I, I can't remember, he might have been, like, 9 or 10, and he's in, like, a little Boba Fett T-shirt. And I'm like, oh, wait. 
we, we got time for one more, right? And this kid walks up and he says, uh, are you guys ever gonna tell the story of why Winston was so upset when Reaper stepped on his glasses? And I'm like, I'm like, oh, uh. dude. It just, you had to have been there in the moment. And, ah, uh, ah, uh, oh, hell. <laughs> Keep it together, man, it's good. Ah, hell. It's, good. it's a good thing, man. <laughs> Crap, all right, at least no one's watching this at home. Yeah, no one in Hall D can see this at all, right, guys? Nobody in Hall D? We can just cut the lights in here at the so, convention uh, center, please. <laughs> ah, crap. So, because the, the answer to his question, I don't want to spoil it or whatever, but like these episodes are, are so important to us. It's just being artists and craftsmen and we're trying to build stories with these characters that matter and will, and will resonate with people and, uh, you're a good man, Chris. Uh, You're a good man. I want to do like, good for that yeah. kid. You are the yep. heart of Blizzard. You, you are absolutely you. the heart of this company. Shit. It is so great. We cuss it's on live. It's okay. <laughs> oh, no. You can. We they pay. Love, we love they Overwatch. Pay so that's fine. <laughs> Overwatch means a lot to us. I feel like every time I interview you, you cry. Uh, I do not. <laughs> uh, Michelle? Michelle? That's not something you should say to somebody. <laughs> Well, let's talk about Thanks, Heroes Michelle. of the Storm, cool. then. Heroes of the Storm yes. had some crazy Heroes of the Storm, yes, yes. Uh, there was a lot of great stories the that came out about Cho'Gall. Oh, yeah. Finding his How brother. rad was that? <laughs> Cho'Gall was fantastic. I mean, we got Cho'Gall, we got Greymane, we got Lenara. I mean, and Tracer. Riot, and Tracer. And Tracer. What's it like for you to have Tracer show up in Heroes of the Storm prior to Overwatch? It's really weird. In, in a weird way, it... Um, it kind of makes it more realer, you know what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah. like right. holy cow, they're starting to bleed now, we're crossing the streams. Uh, it was super cool, but I think actually my mind was blown by Gen the most. Like, it just like, like all yeah. right, baby, and the way they handled the transformation, it was just such a badass. I'm like, right, like that's where Heroes lives for me. It's not necessarily like the A-list characters. I love to see, you know what I mean, characters like Gen, like Cho'Gall, mind-blowing, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, I like to see the kind of deep lore characters get a chance to shine. Um, and for people to get to know them. They might, might have played the RTS games, they might not have played WoW, yeah. um, but through Heroes, they, could, they get at least get little fractals of these universes, right? So I, right. I really love it for that. Right, now I, I have a demand. I mentioned this a little bit during the countdown uh, <laughs> oh, show. Try not to make me cry, man, that yeah. would be good. You have a little bit of power at Blizzard, a little bit, right? Just a tiny bit. <laughs> I don't know about that, man. <laughs> okay, well anyways. There's somebody I mentioned that I would like to see, and I think the people would be behind me on this. Yeah. Is there any way you could put Leroy Jenkins into Heroes of the Storm? <laughs> just put him in there. You know how, just give him a head start. You know how yes. Chen has- Give uh, him a head start, that's all he does. Give him a head start. You know how Chen has, uh, he has the Dead keg builds. Leroy. Give him chicken builds. Yes. <laughs> it would work no. perfectly, it would work perfectly. I think, I think that is a very sound idea. Yeah, man. Are there any I heroes for you that you'd like to see in Heroes of the Storm? That aren't in it yet? Yeah. Yeah. Um, think about that. What hero won't make me cry? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm stumped. Let me think about that. Uh, I'm compromised by the fact that I know a few that are coming up. Ah, <laughs> oh, that's yeah. the thing. I'm like, oh no, that's coming. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I don't know. I don't have a good one. Arturus Mansk. <laughs> that's that's Ooh, great. That's a good one. Arturus yeah, Banks would one. be fantastic. My that's fellow Terrans. And he's just yes. he's just a complete a-hole running around. Can I say that? Like oh my god. And we, we're not done. Like BlizzCon is not done until Lincoln Park plays. Yes. Lincoln right. Park's coming up. You yes, guys have yes. always been huge closing ceremony guys. And now Lincoln Park's coming up very soon. Super exciting. Yeah. Absolutely. You know, a little bit about Overwatch 2, while we still have a little bit of time, what's one of your favorite storylines right now in Overwatch? You guys revealed quite a bit. I think one that's, um, there's that spit again. I think one that's going off is, um, it was kind of a, a reveal in the intro the other day when Genji pulls his sword and says, oh, yes. we shall see, brother. Yeah. And people are going, oh my God, because everyone's been speculating about, are these guys related somehow? It's one of my favorite, favorite, favorite stories um, in Overwatch so far. Um, the brothers Shimada, you know, that they had this yeah. fateful encounter, right? You know, um, how long do we have? I can tell you the story. Go uh, for it. Go for it. But ultimately, <laughs> you know, they're, they're, they're brothers in this, this crime cartel, and their dad is kind of this dominant force, and Genji, uh, you know, Hanzo is the older brother, so nothing was ever expected of Genji, right? He's, he's, 
partying on yachts and you know, he's yeah. living the life and <laughs> he doesn't want to have anything. He's been trained as a ninja, but he doesn't want to have anything to do with the family business. And Hanzo has to shoulder this responsibility and ultimately the old man dies. The leaders of the cartel are like, hey, Hanzo, you need to get your brother in line. <laughs> he's like, oh, I know what this means. And ultimately it builds towards a confrontation and Hanzo is forced to fight his brother, who he loves dearly, but this is honor, and it's the family business. Right. And they fight, and it doesn't go well for young Genji. Hanzo believes that he's killed his brother. Oh. And in his rage, and in his self-hate, and his grief, he leaves the clan, and he's wandered the world ever since, seeking to hone his abilities, thinking that somehow through performance and martial perfection, he's going to find some kind of redemption, but in his heart, he knows he won't. And for all his perfection, he's a wreck of a man. To contrast with, Genji was found by Overwatch, oh. seeking to bring down the cartel. Uh -huh. Overwatch saves Genji. They rebuild his body, they give him cybernetics. Like, you're gonna help us take down the family. And Genji's like, whatever. Because now he can't feel his legs, he can't feel his arms, he's half cybernetic. And he's a wretched creature. He's just he's broken inside, right? His brother, everything. He's like, fine, I'll help you. But he's kind of, he's a dark, broken man. Yeah. Ultimately helps Overwatch bring down the cartel and serves with them for a number of years. And then ultimately, I've had it. I hate myself. I hate this life. I'm a wretched form of life. And he wanders the earth. Strangely, much like his brother, but he finds Zenyatta, the Omnic Whoa. Monk. Oh. <laughs> And Zenyatta, who's part of the Shambhali, right? This order of Omnics that have found a higher humanity, even right. for all their steeled shell. And, and Zenyatta takes this kid in. He's like, I'll, I'll help you find yourself, kid. So they go to Tibet. There's some things we haven't talked about yet, but ultimately, Zenyatta helps Genji find center, find a higher humanity. And Genji becomes a very resonant person, right? No longer bound by hate, self-hate. He finds a way to love himself and see a whole new way of, of looking at the world, looking at people, looking, finding that common humanity in everyone. And ultimately, uh, I won't tell you where it all goes, but uh, my hope is uh, that maybe one day the brothers can be reunited. Um, maybe they can find forgiveness and redemption. Mm. Maybe there is hope for Hanzo. Um, so I, I think I just geeked out on you guys pretty hard, right? But that's I one love it. of 21 stories, right? Oh, God. Um, well, thank we, you so much, Chris Messon. We've got to so toss excited. it over to the closing concert. Here's Lincoln Park. Enjoy.